So ASD, the older, the older uh, specification. So what do we want? We want our capacity to be greater than our loads. That's that's kind of the whole idea behind structural engineering, right? That's what safety means. The capacity is going to be bigger than the loads. But what exactly does that mean for ASD? Um, how do we build in safety factors into this? So first of all, service loads are used. Service load means if the snow load on a roof is expected to be 25 pounds per square foot, this is the service load. So as you start, you say what's expected, and this is often given in a problem or if it's given by the building code if you're in the real world. So you have the expected load and that's what you use without modifying that on that side of the inequality. So typically no factors are applied on the loading side, but there are exceptions. ASD does not recognize the uncertainty of the loads. And this is one of the drawbacks. This is one of the reasons we're moving away from it is it's, it's not quite as precise, at least on the loading side. The structural capacity is reduced on the right hand, right hand side or the capacity side of the inequality. So this is where we make our modifications in ASD. Omega, the safety factor, is typically greater than one and it's used to reduce the capacity on that side of the inequality. So you take the yield strength, you divide it by a number that's bigger than one, therefore that quotient is reduced on the right hand side. So for example, if the yield strength of steel is 36 KSI, the allowable stress for flexure is what? Omega for flexure is 1.67. Uh, this would be given in a problem or it would be given in um, the reference handbook. So if you know that omega for flexure is 1.67, and you know that the yield strength of steel is 36 KSI, what is the allowable stress? The allowable stress for flexure is simply that divided by that. So this is our allowable stress for flexure. So what does that mean? If you have a problem and you know what the loads are, you basically use the service loads. Let me go back up Let me change my color to blue. All right. So now we have service loads. So what loads do we actually expect the building to experience? We use those to, de to determine some quantity on the left-hand side of this, this equation. But then on the right-hand side of the equation, we use that reduced capacity. It's been reduced by dividing by 1.67. So if our stress in a beam due to service loads ends up being less than 21.56, we're good. If it ends up being more than 25, 21.56, we're not good. That means we need to use a bigger member, use a stronger seal, or rearrange the layout of our beams to get that stress under the allowable stress. Um, Praveen says, doesn't this depend on client requirement? Um, that's a good question. Some clients do require either ASD or LRFD, if that's what you're saying. Um, some clients don't care and they leave it up to the engineer. Let me clean up this page. Alma says, is yield strength the same as applied load? Um, so yield strength has to do with the, the material, the capacity of the material. Um, the applied load is on the loading side, right? So if you have a beam with 36 KSI steel, and it's a certain size, it can handle a certain load. The applied load is kind of what is dictated by either the problem statement on the exam or by the, the project requirements. So if the project says you have a classroom with this much weight per foot in that classroom and you have a certain layout of beams, that's the loading side, that's the applied load. Um, 